What's happening guys? Greg Happ here from Menagerie Studio. Today, we're gonna be hopping into Adobe Premiere to show you how to add a little bit of motion to your still photos. Let's jump to it. Right, here we are in Premiere and as you can see we have a still photo here and these photos are actually coming from a good buddy of mine uh, he recently started travel nursing got heavy into photography and his photos are just killer so I'm gonna leave his information up on the screen go ahead follow him on Instagram if nature and landscape photography is is your jam so anyways let's get into it here so we come up here to this motion tab and as you can see we're starting with a scale of 95% that's just how this photo fits into our frame it was probably say 100 but as you can see next to all of these different values here we have a little stopwatch and this is how we're gonna get into our keyframing to add some movement so right off the bat we're just gonna go ahead and make sure our playheads at zero and we're gonna click on this stopwatch for scale and then we're gonna bring this little playhead just somewhere around here for now and we'll just bring this up to 105 so we get a nice slow zoom and then we're going to take this little diamond that was created here that is our keyframe and just drag it right to the end of the clip. We're working with a 10 second duration clip. So as you can see over the entire duration, we'll have a nice slow zoom. And uh, we'll go ahead and make another keyframe on the position. And bring this to our playhead just so we can tell where it's going to end up. We'll just bring this up to about 585. Perfect. Highlight those drag them right to the end. Okay, now that we have some basic motion, we're gonna take it one step further and add a blur around the edges to kind of focus your eye into the center of the frame a little bit. So we'll come over to effects and we're just gonna type blur. Grab a Gaussian blur, drag, drop it onto our clip here. And we'll just go ahead and select a keyframe, drag our playhead, and we'll just bring this up to, we'll say 50. As you can see that blurred our entire frame, we're gonna grab this created keyframe, like the others, just drag it right to the end so that's taking place over the entire duration. So what we're gonna do next on this effect is come over to this create ellipse mask. We're gonna click on that once and we're just gonna grab these little nodes here and drag each one to the edge of our frame. Left, right, bottom, top, don't matter which you do first. Once we have that, we're going to make sure that we click inverted. So now as you can see, the edges are getting a nice blur. And to finish this off, we'll just bring the mask feather up to 300 to ease that in. Okay, next up, we're gonna come back to our effects panel here, and we're just gonna type tint, drag and drop. So you see the entire photo turns black and white. And we have a value here that can be keyframed amount to tint. It's at 100% right now. We bring that down to zero. There's no tint. So we'll go ahead, create a keyframe, drag this over, and we'll come to the very beginning and create a keyframe at 100. So now, as you can see, we slowly fade in to a fully saturated photo. So what we'll do next is click, drag, highlight both of these keyframes, right click, and we'll choose ease in. If you click on this arrow over here, drop down, you'll get a more visual representation of what's happening. So what was once before this very steep curve, we now have a nice slow ease in. Okay, now that we have this animation heading in the right direction, we're gonna add a little bit of text. So we click on this type tool here and we're just going to type Yosemite National Park. Drop down, do a little dash and this is Taft Point. And what I did here is I just went onto Google and I grabbed the exact coordinates of Taft Point, copied those, pasted those in, and ended it with a dash. I think it just kind of gives it a little, you know, a little pizzazz, I don't know. I like it. So we'll click off of our type tool. As you can see in our effects controls panel, we have the text. Now the font I'm using is A-Z-O Sans. And we're gonna go with a black italic and all caps. As you can see, we're 
way too big right now, but we're going to select this type tool again, highlight the bottom here, change this to medium italic, and bring the font size down to 55. Giving us a nice lower third, we can click and position this as we would like. Next, we're gonna add a background. If you come over here underneath appearance and just check the background box, and we're just gonna increase the border to 30, giving us just a nice little border around the text. Next, we're just gonna make sure we bring this to the very beginning of our timeline and extend it out to the full duration. And we're gonna animate this in. So let's say we want the picture to kind of fade into saturation, and then we want the lower third to come in. What we'll do is go back into the effects controls, click on the position keyframe, come ahead just a little bit, whatever feels right, we can always adjust it, create another keyframe, and we can use these little arrows, as you can see, go to previous keyframe to just easily jump back and forth between keyframes, because sometimes when you do it manually and then you change the position, say, uh, you'll create another keyframe. It's just to be more precise, save yourself some headaches. So we're gonna take this first keyframe and just position this right off screen. Highlight those keyframes. We'll give it an ease in and an ease out. If we click on this drop down menu again, you can see hitting plus or minus on the keyboard will zoom you in to wherever your playhead is, or you can use this down here. As you can see, we have a nice ease in, ease out. Now, these little nodes right here, these little notches can be clicked and dragged upon to give yourself a little more dynamic movement. Now, as you can see, just a nice ease in from off frame. I think that looks great. So now let's say we want this to come in right at the beginning. It's as simple as clicking and dragging on those keyframes you made on the text layer, bringing them right to the beginning. Boom. I kind of liked where it was at. And if you want to affect the duration of the ease in or out, just click on either of these keyframes and you can fully adjust it from there. That feels a little too slow. We'll bring this back in a little bit. It's just kind of all about feel. And uh, I think that feels pretty good. All right, let's say we want this lower third to animate out. Um, a little something that I like to do is uh, come back into our effects panel here, and we're just gonna type blur again. Grab the Gaussian blur, drag, drop it onto our clip. And what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that that blur is above your text. Sometimes if you just drag and drop it into here, it can be below your text layer. And all of these are collapsible. Tidy up your space a little bit. Basically just make sure your blur is above your text. So what we're gonna do somewhere near the end of our clip, we're going to keyframe the blurriness, come forward, and we'll just bump this up to 100. We'll highlight these again. We'll give it a nice ease in. We're gonna come to the opacity dropdown, keyframe right on the blurriness keyframe already created, skip ahead to where we're at 100% blurred and bring the opacity down to zero. We'll highlight those, give those an ease in as well. Now, as you can see, and just one quick tip while we're on the subject of keyframes, if we come over to our timeline down here and let's say we wanna fade out the picture as well, you can always right click, apply default transitions and then you have a nice cross dissolve. But to give you a little more flexibility, if you hold control or command on your keyboard, you get this little plus sign when you're hovering over this thin white line here throughout your clip and that creates a keyframe right on the clip. Now, if we come ahead and we just drag that down, we get a nice slow fade out. Now you can right click on these keyframes just like any of the other ones, and we'll just give this an ease in, and it gives you this little notch here, and now you can fully adjust the curve. And bam, 
So that's just the very basics into keyframing to give yourself some movement for still pictures. While you're here, please make sure to give this video a like if you learned something. Give it a dislike if you didn't. If I wasted your time, I am sorry. But please leave a comment on anything that you would like us to cover. You let us know. This is your channel as much as it is ours. Thanks for stopping by. Click that subscribe if you'd like to see some more content. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to get notified anytime we put out new content. This has been Greg Happ from Menagerie Studio. Talk to you next time. Thank you